So I bought a new carburetor or an old carburetor for my YTM 225. It's a Trimoto 225DX and it's a Makuni carb from a Moto 4. So it should be the same carb. I'm kind of showing you what was on it. Came with this Chinese carb, which it worked out all right. Wasn't the best for starting. Had to adjust the idle air screw a lot. Uh, really tough to start in the cold. Some big differences you see here right away. Look at the difference in that intake bore size. This is the Makuni. Look how small that is. So I think we're going to see some some decent performance gains. Um, other things are obviously this one says Makuni on the side, made in Japan. This one says nothing. <clears throat> I'm just going to go over taking this car apart, uh, running it through the parts washer, cleaning it up, um, getting it back on the three wheeler and seeing how it runs. Uh, one thing I did want to check here is the size of the bore between these two because this one should be 24 millimeters and just by eye they look about the same. So take a look at the Makuni. It measures out about 22 millimeters. This one measures out about the same so so before I start taking it apart I'm, I'm going to assume this, this came off a running machine, so I'm going to see where all these screws are set before I take it. Up, before I start taking everything out, and basically, when I run it through the parts washer or the hydrosonic cleaner, I want to take out, take apart as much of it as I can. Uh, if something's too difficult to get out, like a jet, I'm just going to leave it in there. So let me get in this idle air screw here, and we are. Jeez, not even half a turn. So I'm gonna write that down. Check the well, idle screw. I'm not really too concerned with, but we'll see if I can figure this one out. Got three on the idle. This didn't cost me all that much, so I'm expecting this to be kind of a mess as far as cleanliness goes. From the pictures I could see on eBay, everything was here except for the choke assembly. Uh, lucky for me, the guy was selling the choke cable with the choke, on, choke assembly on the end of it, so I had to buy that too. But neither one of them were all that expensive. Another thing I can see here is it looks like there's some gasket sealant around this float bowl. Kind of see it squeezing out here. I don't know if you can see that. Here, maybe some here that could be gasket. There's definitely some gasket sealant here, so I know I'm gonna need a new flow pole gasket based on that. Hopefully, I don't need a whole lot. You know, I have no idea what rebuild kit to buy for this anymore, it's so old. Think stop. Uh, yeah, look at that. Pretty nasty in there. So I'm going to run it through the ultrasonic enough to make the stink as less as it can be. You know how stinky these old carbs can be. Then I'm going to take it in the house where it's warm and finish it up. Um, some other things you can tell about the 225 carbs and maybe a bunch of the other ones is around the main jet they have this baffle right here. Uh, you don't normally see that on a carburetor. I don't know what it does. I imagine it just stops some fuel from splashing around too much and focuses it into that main jet. Hmm, it's interesting. So I guess it just sits on there. Anyways, I'll work on the slide in a second, see if these jets crack loose. Yep. So that's your that's your main jet here. I'm gonna have to check the sizes between the Moto 4 and the Trimoto, make sure that's the same. This is your pilot jet. I think my screwdriver is a little too big. Nope, that thing's pretty loose. It probably wasn't running so great. That's your idle air screw here. You can get to it with the float on. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to pop the float off, inspect the needle, and then uh, I'm going to get the slide out, inspect the other needle, and then I'll, uh, I'll come back and show you guys what I find here. These jets actually look pretty good. Main jet, I could see some light through it. 
uh, pilot jet. It's pretty small, but I can see some light through it. Still going to clean them. Uh, the ultrasonic cleaners are great. If you don't have one, you should get one. Um, I am 100% success on every carburetor I've ever put in there. And most of the time, I can't even get them apart like this until after it's gone through there. So what I run in the ultrasonic, and I just have the cheap one from Harbor Freight, uh, the central machinery, whatever, barely holds this carburetor. It's like 50 bucks. Is uh, I've done 50-50 water mixture with Simple Green, uh, Pine Saw, Lysol, anything I can find. Then uh, after it's done, I let it dry for a little bit, spray everything really well with WD-40, and then let it sit for a while because you don't want any water coming from the carburetor and getting into your uh, into your engine at all. You know, back in the old days, you'd have to soak this stuff in parts cleaner and carb cleaner and get little strands of wire and just run them through all those holes and through the holes in the jets. And it took hours. These ultrasonic cleaners have made a, a big difference here. I'm going to pop this float out. Looks like this needle should only come out one way. If you can see that, I shouldn't be able to push it out the other way. I can. I guess I'm a liar about that. So you can push this needle out either way. My eyesight isn't what it used to be. Uh, so I can't quite see this without my glasses on. Um, I remember these being a rubber tip. And then if you saw a line on it, you knew that and it was kind of worn out. This one kind of looks like a metal tip. I'm going to inspect it, but I, I think I can see a little wear line on here. So I'm probably going to have to replace this needle. There's also a, a seat on the other side. And I'm going to get that out check that out as well. Be very careful with the... Let me show you. Oops. Again, I'm assuming that this was running. So I'm going to be very careful right now with that tab. I don't want to bend it. That's how you set the the depth of that needle and that allows the water sorry allows the gas to flow in and out of this float bowl so when your float comes down your needle opens up gas comes through that hole and comes in so I don't want to mess with that I don't want to touch it assuming it's set properly right now I have to get this slide out without getting my finger stuck or something ah there we go so this is out. Again, you want to check this needle for wear. Looks okay with my poor eyesight. It's also a setting on here. You can slide this out of here. Just, oops. This little clip right there is the depth that your needle sits down inside your main jet. So you adjust that up or down if you're having any trouble. I'm going to again assume that this carb is running well, so I'm going to leave it alone. And put this in the bin. So, the more of this I can get opened up, and the more of that solvent that I can get running through here and get all this stuff cleaned up. I don't think this does anything. It's just a, goes to a hole on the inside. I don't see where any air comes through. So, but I've come this far. Take this one out too. be for something else so choke assembly goes in here and like I said the carburetor didn't have it but I was able to buy the choke cable so I know these are hard to find so I've got two of these now and it had the choke assembly on the end so I'm not going to take this apart because it looks like a pain in the ass but I am going to run it through the hydrosonic cleaner just kind of stick the cable end in there and then I'm just going to replace my whole choke cable with this one uh, seems to work it's a little, little slow on the return there but maybe it's because it's not in the guide yeah that's all right so here's the Harbor Freight's parts cleaner it's heated Runs on six minute cycles, so I'll run the carburetor through here. I don't know, four or five cycles till everything looks clean. Uh, it has a little tray in the bottom. 
as you scoop your stuff out, all the little screws are going to end up uh, beneath that tray. So just dig them out of there. So don't go dumping your water out till you make sure you have all your parts. I'm going to be going 50-50 mixture of simple green and some distilled water. You know, one of the joys of uh, Michigan winters is my simple green was frozen solid. So I went ahead and uh, mixed this in the bottle with hot water. So I'm going to pour that in there and uh, get it started. You see how dirty it is and when this thing's done. And, uh, I'm going to put some more solvent in there just to fill over the top. Uh, barely covers these carburetors and they're small. So if you have a larger carburetor than this, then I usually run a cycle, flip it over, run another cycle. So I'm going to uh, run this through for a while, then take it inside. Uh, well, so you're going to run it through here for a while, coat everything with WD-40 to get the water out, take everything in the house, let it dry out for a couple days, and uh, see what parts I need to re replace, and then I'll be back here. All right, so I said I wouldn't be back till they were done, but it's through the first cycle, so just kind of reach in here, stir everything, flip it around. See if the floats are working. That's good. Just kind of, just kind of stir it up here. And we're going to set it in here for another eight minutes. It's heated, but it's cold out, so it's not doing a whole lot today. Oh, coming up in a future video, somebody gave this to me as a uh, stocking stuffer. So I'm going to see what it's made of. So look out for that video coming in the future. goes on eight minute cycles. There we go. See you soon. Okay, a little, little update in the middle. Uh, you know, full transparency. Float bowl need a little extra help, so got my wife's toothbrush in there and uh, scrubbed it up. It's starting to come out real nice. And I did discover, yep, there was some gasket sealing on there and it's, it's on there pretty good, so I'm gonna have to work with that to scrape it off. Ran the uh, choke assembly through there. Look how nice that looks. So that one's all done. And uh, just gonna let everything else keep going. Again, floats are still good. So give it one more stir. Mix all your parts around. Put the lid on the right way. And away it goes. All right, so I think we're done here. So I'm gonna pull these out and you can see that. I might have to run that one through a couple more times, but I am done for tonight. So I'm gonna spray these down with WD-40 and uh, toss them in this bin, run them inside, let them dry out for a couple days. Work at this gasket sealer. That's a good tip, you know. It's might be a quick five minute fix now, but it's gonna take me an hour to get that out of there. So try to avoid doing that if you can. Uh, everything is looking nice and clean. Float bowl had some help, but nice and clean inside there. See what else I can grab. I mean, that is what it is. But you won't be able to see anything else, but this is the car body. You know, it all looks good. What's nice about the ultrasonic is it gets in all those spots that you can't get to with a toothbrush or a pick or whatever else. So, see you back here in a couple days. Put this back together, throw it on the Trimoto, see what happens. So, everything's clean. Uh, float bowl looks good. Uh, this looks okay. It's clean, which is a little, you know, it's. Not shiny like I'd like it to be. I sprayed it out with carb cleaner and scrubbed it down. So I'm going to start putting it back together. I bought a, a, a rebuild kit for it. The only parts I'm using out of it are the gasket and the O-rings. You know, everything else looks pretty good. On the original carb, uh, the needle looks pretty good. So I'm going to keep it if it leaks. I've got the one out of the rebuild kit, but you know it's not a name brand or anything. So just gaskets, O-rings. And uh, that's it. So I'm going to start throwing this back together. And start, start going. It's the main jet holder here. And 
everything cleaned up real nice. You, know, you can't see it's too small, but all the parts look good. Oh, I did use the uh, the spring in the washer for the starter screw or the uh, the pilot screw too. There just was nothing on there, so had nothing on it. Pilot jet doesn't get an O-ring. So it just goes in here. This was loose when I was taking it apart, so hopefully that was what was wrong with it before. So also this tiny, tiny jet. Look at that little thing. And it goes down in, it actually goes in the float. It goes in that hole right there. I had to get my glasses out, magnifying glass and the flashlight. I didn't think it was in there. So. And, and this screw just plugged up this hole, didn't do anything else. So while we're doing, or while you guys are watching me do this, I'll uh, let you know that it took me a good hour to get all that gasket sealer off of there. Did it with these wooden clothespin pieces. I could, couldn't find a popsicle stick, but those worked out pretty well. Just kind of picked away at it and picked away at it. So this is the idle air adjustment here. And... If I remember from what I wrote down on the cardboard, it, this was at half a turn, which I think the factory setting is turn and a half. So I'm going to back it out to a half a turn now, and I'll look it up, and I'll add it to the video what it's supposed to be. But I kind of thought I'd put everything back the way they had it, but I kind of changed my mind on that now that everything's clean. And this one was three full turns back, but... This all needs to be, it'll all need to be set again. Actually, this little holder goes on there first. I printed off, you know, well, how this is supposed to go together. Printed off a numbered list from uh, the website, and then the uh, list of what all these parts are. There's a couple of things on here didn't look right but they were all right so this thing shows this plate and then that little tiny piece I don't have that little tiny piece but if I look in here it would sit right there over that screw hole and just a little machined edge here so I think it just takes up that little bit of space and I'm pretty sure I don't need it so I'm just gonna put the screw back in it And it was just holding this the seat in there, so I don't know what what could it, what could it would do. So your needle just hangs on the float like that. Set it down in the hole. Get your pin. slide it through there and, and you can see the float goes up and down and needles all the way down right about there so I'm certain that it closes it off so make sure we get enough fuel so this thing just kind of sits on here <laughs> nothing really holds it in place I think it's kind of weird And the gasket. It's not the best fit. Oh, there we go. So. 
only bought this rebuild kit because it was like $21. The gasket from Yamaha was $10. And I figured I got all these O-rings and spring with it, so I went with the kit instead. And uh, hopefully that gasket fits well enough to have everything here. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Don't forget that. So parts diagram shows an o-ring on this. This is the uh, the float drain and I don't have it and this was the one that came in the rebuild kit and it's too big so we're gonna try it without it since that's super easy to change. I don't take anything apart for that. So the other thing I figured out, this is a VM22 carburetor. So I thought it was the, I thought this, the Trimoto came with the VM24, but that was only the 86 model. And then the 86 Moto4 225 came with the VM22. So I kind of got, kind of got lucky uh, that I got the exact carb, but I probably would rather have the 24. But... This is what's supposed to be on there, 22. And somebody in the internet told me that the part numbers are actually stamped on these things. And they are. So that's 59V, so that's the uh, first three numbers of the VIN on 86 Moto 4, 225. So I'm certain that I have that carburetor. I'm just about done here. And this is going back in with no o-ring. There's nothing in there. So, you'll know right away if that leaks or not. Okay, so I'm going to replace this piece of rubber using the one off the other carburetor and this you know the slide and the needle they go on the end of the throttle cable and you know there's a little little pin down there inside you want this to slide over top of that so you got this line here it goes over top of that guide and I put this back where it was actually I never removed the clip so it's still where it was so but I don't put that in yet because this goes on the end of the throttle cable. So I'll do that out there. I replaced this gasket with the one from the kit. And, uh, well, forget all this goes together like that. It goes on the end of the throttle cable. So we're done for now. Um, when it gets a little warmer, tomorrow probably, I'm going to go out, put this on the, the uh, three wheeler. And I'm, I'm hopeful it's going to fire up right away. So I uh, will uh, see you out there. Okay, so here's the new carburetor, or the new used carburetor installed. Um, had to play with the throttle cable a little bit and uh, adjust it so I had enough enough cable to work with. Choke cable went in no problem, chokes in no problem. Uh, not leaking any fuel, so the needle's good. And I wanna show you the uh, this is the carburetor I took off of here. You see that's the choke assembly there. It's uh, pretty much disintegrated on the top. It's a bunch of, bunch of corrosion or whatever that is in there. The cable wasn't even connected to it anymore. So it tells me, you know, that's why this wasn't, wasn't working. Pretty much garbage. It wasn't even a year old. So uh, let me get this thing started up or hopefully see how it starts up. So it struggled on that first start to get it going, but now it's got fuel and everything's flowing smoothly. So here it goes. Oh, helps to turn the key on. I know it's a little high.
still needs a little bit of a tune, but definitely better than that Chinese carb. Real happy with it so far.